name's Lee and you're watching me on Kona Flipper. I'm a UK eBay reseller. I buy second-hand items at car boot sales and charity shops and I resell them online for a profit. Um, it is Sunday the 17th of July. Um, it's been a good car booting weekend. Uh, went out for um, car boots both Saturday and Sunday. Had a really, really good day yesterday with regards to um, quality clothing finds. Today was more of a, lots of different random bits and pieces. Um, anything from um, handbags, trainers, to uh, Nerf guns, to uh, paperweights. So it's, it's been a, a good, varied day. Um, one of the good things about picking up a variety of items is that if there's a lull in clothing, my shoes might still sell well. Or if there's a lull in my shoes, toys might sell well. Um, there are going to be ups and downs, and by having a whilst it's good to to niche down, to build up your expertise in a specific area, you can still have a variety of different options, which help you um, a have variety within your store, which means that hopefully you don't get um, a period of suppression where no clothes are selling because something else will pop up and, and sell, but also it means that you by having that wider variety of um, things that you pick up you are open to more options when you're out and about the car boot so you are more likely to to see something that you're that could make you money because you're not completely niche down to, to one area um niching down is good for the fact you become an expert in an area but once you've, you've learned that area yes continue to learn but learn elsewhere as well um so yeah some some good pickups and a bit of a duffer um but i will i'm not going to show you everything i've picked up um but I'm going to show you some of the, the better bits and useful bits from uh, Saturday and Sundays. So I'm going to try and rattle through as quick as I can. Um, I guess the first one to talk about is this bad boy. This is a Nerf, what is it? Thunderhawk. Now, I only paid £4 for that and I thought, this, you know, Nerf guns can go quite well. Some of the bigger ones can go for £30, £40, £50, £60, depending on the time. And this was my first buy of the day, and it was my worst buy of the day. Even though I've only paid four pounds, I had my six o'clock eyes on where I just wanted to get stuff because there were a lot of people diving in. And whilst it may look like a good buy at four pounds, what I didn't realize, oh, because I wasn't paying attention, didn't have the cartridge for the bullets. And there's also a little um, handle, which you use for, for reloading, missing. So um, basically I've paid £4 for something which is incomplete and that I can't test. So um, yeah, not ideal considering I've already got a great big load of Nerf stuff already which I haven't got around to selling. So um, I will be doing a car boot sale soon and this is going to be going back out. So if someone else buys it, it's their job to check whether everything's there. But that is my mistake. So if you are buying something, try and make sure it's all there because otherwise you will waste your money. So uh, that is my lesson of the day. Um, shoes wise, I did get quite a lot. I've not got all of them out, um, but a couple of pairs. So I've got some Nike Air Max uh, 90s. They're a little bit worn around the, the heel of the EVA um, midsole, the colors coming off a little bit, but always check through the bend chest to make sure that the, um, the sole isn't cracked and, and completely degraded also check inside the heel to make sure it's not worn through so that's fine on here um, and these are a, a men's 10 good size i paid eight pound for these should be able to sell sort of somewhere around the sort of 35 to 45 pound without too much problem on those um which ones was it yeah it was these ones were a bit stinky and shoe smelling can be a bit of an issue um well a you, you could get a return because they stink and it's just not nice selling a, a pair of shoes that stink. So something that I buy and use is this. This is uh, by a company called Muck Off um, and it's called Foam Fresh and it's meant to be for motorbike stuff. So it keeps your helmet lining, uh, body armor, gloves, boots and shoes clean and smelling fresh. So basically it's like, um, it comes out like a mousse. So you shake it up, you spray it in, the mousse, the foam, fills the entire shoe and it's antibacterial etc and then it puts like a lemony smell in there it doesn't leave any stains so it's, it's good for um for example it's meant built for things like a, a, a motorcycle helmet 
you can't put that in the wash, can you? So that is why it's great. It goes into any sort of shape. So if you've got things that aren't smelling as fresh as they possibly could do, that is quite good. It's not cheap. Um, uh, it was about seven quid, I think, uh, six or seven quid uh, from Amazon. I'll make sure there's a link in the description. Um, it's it's good. It's some, something that you should definitely consider um, buying some of if you sell a lot in the way of uh, trainers or um, sports boots or, or motorcycle gear um, because it makes sure that your what you're selling is going to smell fresh rather than like someone's armpit or feet. Um, so yeah, that's those. They are now smelling fresh and all good. Um, talking of fresh, I did have some people uh, mention about putting shoes on the table. Shoes are fil filthy, shoes are dirty, shoes can be treading into dog poo uh, and they've got people sweating them. Putting them on your table, it's not a nice thing to do. Um, so with regards to cleaning, I never clean them in my kitchen sink or my bathroom. I've got a big tray which I, I clean shoes out in the garage with and that makes sure I don't have the dirt inside my kitchen or bathroom or wherever. Uh, number two, this is not our um, dining table, it's not a, a, a cloth that we eat off. This is an old picnic blanket or a throw, which I literally use for um, doing my uh, my videos because I don't want someone's filthy shoes on my dining table. So um, yeah, if you're concerned about shoes being on here, don't worry so much. Uh, got a, a pair of Air Force Ones in gold. Uh, I paid, the guy wanted eight quid um, for this and then another pair of shoes and we agreed on 14 for both pairs, so these cost me seven. Uh, should be able to flip those somewhere between 30 and 40 something quid. Um, there's a little bit of rubbing on the gold, but generally good condition. So, um, and the gold ones I've not seen before, so um, it makes them stand out from the crowd. Uh, I don't know if I'd have spent that money on ones which were just the plain white ones because they're a bit nothing really. Um, and again, another pair of Air Force Ones, uh, paid eight for these. And these are in sort of a, a leopard print. So again, I, I try and get stuff that stands out and there's a little bit different. So leopard print Air Force Ones, uh, yeah, eight quid for those. So should do well at those. Again, all of those in around the 30-ish pounds, 30 to sort of 45-ish pound mark, depending. Uh, these are some very bright red shoes. These are a pair of Russell and Bromley shoes. Um, Russell and Bromley, excellent, excellent brand. Um, I have just sold a pair of uh, Russell and Bromley Jodhpur boots. Jodhpur boots are very similar to um, Chelsea boots, but slightly different design. Um, and I just sold those for 60-ish, I think. So you, Russell and Bromley shoes, generally you're looking at well over 100 pounds brand new. These ones are in good condition. They have been resold um, and they're in, in good shape. I paid four for those. Haven't looked at comps yet, but I wouldn't have thought there'd be any issue getting 30 quid but I would have thought I should be able to get more than that depends on how long I want to hold on to them but um yeah that's a four pound that's nice and safe there um and then uh what have we got here ah these were brand new kickers I mean they're not the nicest looking shoe but I'm not going to be wearing them so I don't give a monkey's so these are absolutely brand new never used um, and I got those for four quid, so very happy with that. Uh, I haven't looked at comps on those, but I would have thought, uh, uh, again, at least about 30 odd quid, so um, should be should be pretty safe with those ones. Right. Uh, let's get on to these. Got myself a couple of Paperweights. Um, these paperweights were all on one store. Um, if you haven't seen it already, one of my um, Become a Better Reseller videos uh, was on how to research paperweights. And since doing that video, I have hardly seen any paperweights at car boot sales. And the ones that I have seen have either been damaged or were um, unsigned ones. So I didn't know who'd made them. And if you don't know who makes them, the odds are people aren't just looking for a paperweight, they're looking for a paperweight by a specific manufacturer because they may be collecting it or there's a specific design that they like. These ones were all priced, but they are all signed. So I picked up, uh, basically they were, this was 10, this was a Selco. 
This one was six, and this is a Caithness, or Caithness. Uh, this one is another Selkirk, that was 12, and this was another Caithness, and that was six. Good things about the, the ones being signed is that um, these particular ones also have the, the model name. So this one is a Caithness Polka, uh, P O L K A Polka Polka, and this is a Caithness Celebration. Is it? No, Congratulations. Um, so, uh, in total, it should have come to thirty-two pound, and um, we we did a deal at thirty. Probably overpaid a little bit, um, but I still need to do a bit of research. So, um, this one at ten. I think I, I, I had a very quick look, but I'm not 100%, so I do need to do a little bit more work. I think that only sells for about 20 something, so 20 to 30. Should I really pay 10 for something that goes into 20 or 30? Probably not. Um, but I'm still, this is something area that I thought my money will be safe, but it, it, I didn't want to leave them there and lose them. Uh, so I thought it was worth the, the punt to take it. This one, the, the Polka. Pay six pounds again, not hugely valuable, something around the, the 20 25 pound mark, it seems. Um, but again, most of those were, were badly taken photos, so I, I might be able to get, get more for these if I take really good photos. Um, this one, the uh, Caithness, congratulations! I, I think this is one of my favorites out of them all, um, and again, not massively valuable 25 30 quid, so not brilliant considering. But this one, this is a one that I was a little bit more excited about because it is a numbered one. So this is number 25 out of 500 and this is from 2001, so it's 20 years old. Um, I'll bring them all up in a moment to, to show you. Um, and that one could not find any sold comparables. So I do need to do more research on that one. But being a numbered one, having when I did the research before for the Become a Better Refiller, um, series. There are more of those coming, I've just been very, very busy. Um, of all the the um, paperweights that were in the higher price category, so over your £50, it seemed they were either a very, very sought after uh, manufacturer or they were numbered ones. So being a numbered one, of a, okay, it would be nice if it was one of um, 250 rather than one of 500, but it's still a numbered one, so that is definitely better than, better than nothing. Um, that's the one I paid the most for, I paid 12 for that, but hopefully the profit on that pays for the lot, at least, so uh, we shall see. But I'll bring them up to the camera now so you can have a quick look at them, um, and then I'll move on to other bits and pieces. Okay, that's the first one. And if that's going to focus. That's a Selka. Uh, this is a Caithness. It's called Polka. Probably not going to be able to focus and see the, the marking on the bottom. This is the one called Celebration, which to me looks like You've just dropped an egg into some boiling water. Uh, again, not sure if you'll be able to see the text underneath. And this is the limited one, and it's called Sundown. And that was Selkirk, number 25 of 250, oh, sorry, of 500. I don't know if that is gonna focus. But yeah, it's been quite nice to actually pick up some, um, some paperweights after talking about them so long ago and not actually finding one since. Um, right, I'll get on and show you some other bits. Right, so a couple of handbags and then on to clothing. Uh, clothing wise, today is more of your bread and butter type stuff, but my bread and butter stuff sells relatively quickly 
Um, I don't make huge margins on it, but they're good, and it means that I get funds back into the business, and that pays for the items which I don't mind sitting for, uh, letting sit for longer, which have a much, much higher margin. Um, so, firstly, let's get onto the bags. But the, yeah, no, yesterday's pickups for the clothing, I had some mega, mega items in there, so stick around because uh, we're talking a like, proper high-end designer, not, not just designer designer, it's like decent high-end. Um, handbag, but talking of high-end designers, Salvatore Ferengamo. Um, it's not the best pronunciation, but that bag, that was a pound. Um, and it's genuine. I, I don't know how um, it only was selling for a pound. I was looking at these and uh, a pair of okay-ish trainers that needed more cleaning than I really wanted. Uh, and it was early on. And um, I asked for the trainers first, they're four quid. And I thought, well, oh, four quid's not too bad, but I'm thinking there's a lot of cleaning to do there. And I said, oh, how much for the bag as well? He said, um, uh, a pound for that. Um, and then when I looked at the, the difference is, this is worth a lot. The trainers I had to put more work into. I, I haven't actually done the comps yet, but if you go and look on the, the Salvatore Farangamo website, you will see how much handbags, etc., cost. costs. We're, we're talking hundreds. So um, to get that in good condition, needs a little bit of a clean. Uh, some of the, the new but needs uh, a little bit of a brush, but otherwise for a pound out, that is an absolute bargain. So really, really pleased with that. This this is Mulberry. Um, I've always got my my eyes switched on for Mulberry because um, my wife has got quite a few Mulberry handbags. Um, what she used to do was whenever she got her annual bonus, she would allocate some of that to buying a Mulberry bag. So over the years, the, the collection has grown and I'm quite familiar with uh, the build quality, the brassware, how they're put together, the materials. So I'm, I'm a pretty good judge and can spot counterfeit ones relatively easily. Um, I took a punt on this because I wasn't 100% sure, but at £10, it was worth taking the risk. And at £10, if it, were to be counterfeit that's just a nice bag that i can we can use as a as a family for a tenner for a leather bag can't go wrong now things because they are quite often fate uh one of the things to to know is the quality of the leather because you'll often find that the leather is either faux leather or it's a much much cheaper grade of leather and it's thinner and lighter um, typically, mulberry bags are, are quite heavyweight, and this is a nice heavyweight leather. You've got the right coloured brass underneath. One of the, the main stud and the bottoms come off, um, and often you'll find where you've got ribbing around the edges. If that's worn through, you can you can look at the edges of the leather and, and see whether it's the, the sort of a quality. And often you'll find oh, but ones that have worn through aren't actual leather; they're they're faux leather. This is a proper decent leather handbag big um, tote bag and even things I was folding back the inside to look at the lining there's no lining here but the, look at the um, at the suede inside um, I've now compared this to my wife's handbags and this is genuine as, as far as I as as confident as I can be because I know her ones are either bought from um, Mulberry shops or from John Lewis, I we know 100% they're real, so I've got something I can first hand compare it to. If you've never had a Marlboro or don't own one, it makes it a lot, lot harder to to be 100% sure. Things that I was looking for is the, when I was buying this was the, how detailed and how clear the stamp of the Marlboro logo was, how um, uniform the stitches were the quality of the leather on the handles, you would typically have a thick leather on the outside and a, a smoother leather on the inside. The pouch on the inside, there is some wear to that, which did make me question it a bit. And then you'll have this little mulberry tag and often, not always, there will be a serial number on the inside. So I should be able to check this with um, 
library to, to be sure. Just because it has a, uh, a serial number on it does not mean it's real because counterfeiters would know to then make them. So you will find some that have got a, a code on the back but are still counterfeit. Another thing to be wary of is that if it doesn't have a code on the back, that doesn't mean that it's not real either because they didn't introduce that until like 12 or so years ago. So if you've got an older mold bag, it wouldn't have that anyway. Um, other little things, where the zipper is, on the inside of that zipper, more modern ones will have the mulberry stamp on the back of the actual, uh, the zip, I don't know what it's called, the zip rider, whatever it is, the, the bit that you pull along that actually holds, pulls the teeth together. More modern mulberry bags will have a mulberry stamp on the bottom of that. Older ones don't, so it's very, very difficult. Um, looking, it depends on the age of the bag, and one of the only things you can, I guess, do is sort of just have a, a, a good knowledge of quality materials so if it is fake it's a very very good one and it's a decent quality materials I don't believe it is having checked against my wife's um, bags so knew that would have been around prices have gone up um, so a mulberry from 15 years ago as the the company became more sought after and you had bags like the the Roxanne and the, the what's the other good one the Alexa not that Alexa is going to start talking to me in a minute um, as they become more popular the prices every year would start ramping up so a medium-sized handbag now costs a hell of a lot more than a medium-sized handbag 10 years ago this would have been about 700 pounds uh, this bag is about 2009 um, and it would have been around the £700 mark. Now you're probably looking closer to £1,000 for a bag of that size. Um, so for a tenner, that was a, a well worth a punt. Um, still need to do a little bit of research. I'm going to contact Mulberry as well, um, just to be sure. If it does end up being counterfeit, we just keep it and use it ourselves. But that is a very nice handbag, so well chuffed with that. I haven't looked at comps. I don't know how much that's worth at the moment but it's got to be a good 170 to 200 pounds, I would have thought. So very, very happy with that. Uh, right, let's bang through a little bit of um, bread and butter clothing to show you the stuff that I try and flip quickly. And that keeps the cash flowing so I can then pay for the more expensive bits. So I'll get some uh, more clothing out. Right, I'll try and get through this quickly. Uh, this is more my bread and butter stuff, not the designer stuff, which I'll show you shortly. But I... If I was doing this full time, I would have to get much, much more volume of the your, your bread and butter standard stuff. But because I um, am a part timer and I don't have a huge amount of time, I can focus more on the designer stuff and get more bang for my buck. Um, I, by targeting the higher end stuff, it means that I can average a higher profit per item average. And now I think my profit per item over the last three months has been about £26 profit per item after all fees. So. Not bad, not bad. Um, I've had a look. My I'm, I'm trying to increase the 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 value or cost per item um, within my store. So my eBay shop has only got like a hundred and seventy-ish items for sale, but my total value of that hundred and seventy odd items is something like nine thousand pounds. So I'm trying to keep high-end items so that. Uh, high value items so that when they sell I would rather sell a handful of items a week and make 20 to 30 pound profit per item than say sell 40 items a week and and make a I don't know five to ten pound on each it's for, for the time I've got available I'd rather spend that time listing higher profit items than having a pack I don't know six seven items a night that's only gonna make me a couple of quid each. It's not worth my time. So that's not gonna work for everyone, but for me, my situation, that works. It won't work for everyone. Right, so I'll bang through these quickly. Kath Kidston dress, uh, paid five pound for that. I have no idea what the comps are, but I would have thought that's gotta be a safe five and a 20 as a bare minimum. Uh, I would have thought probably more but I haven't looked, so this is just, I haven't looked at any comps, um, 
but I would have thought I should be fine on that. Uh, what we got here? Uh, Hobbs. So I've got a Hobbs dress. Don't get all Hobbs stuff, but if it's a sensible price and an interesting pattern or design, I will go for it. So a uh, Hobbs dress was. Uh, Got a couple of items from that lady. I think it was. We, I paid eleven pound for three items. So I see if I can find the others in that pile. <laughs> um, yeah, that one and that one. So this is another Hobbs, and this is the green label. So it's older. I don't know about vintage, but it is older. Um, so we've got that one. Being summer, it's a nice lightweight dress. Again, that, what am I doing? That's not a very good fold, is it? Right, I would have thought that shouldn't be too difficult to get 20 plus pounds for that. Uh, ideally, I'm gonna push for 30. So uh, 11 pounds for those two, and, oh, 12 pounds, sorry, for those two, and this one, which is another Hobbs. And this is one in a, a black label, so. Sort of a leopard print mid sleeve dress. So each one of those, the skirt will go for less. The dresses minimum I should make um, sell them for is twenty. I would push higher. I'm going to list them for thirty something and see where I go. But my money's safe with those. Uh, there's two ladies sharing a store. They had all one lady's stuff on one side, the other lady's stuff on the other. Uh, this was Ted Baker. I think I paid five for that. Some Ted Baker stuff doesn't sell very well, some does. I just thought that was quite a, a funky uh, skirt, so I thought that should go okay. And then what was the other one with her? No. God knows. I've got so many dresses here, I don't know what's what anymore. So um, anyway, so I've got a few bits from them. Uh, this is Whistles, a jumper dress. Whistles always goes quite well for me. Decent, decent quality brand, quite expensive. So um, I only paid a pound for that. Um, when I'm, I'm working out my, my profits, etc., um, I work out roughly what I've spent. If I've gone and bought 10 dresses, I'll work out what I spent on the 10 dresses and then just divide it up, just so I've got a rough ballpark figure of what I spent per item. And I try and do that in my head as I'm going along and try and keep my averages down. So I try and keep my dress average down to around um, a fiver per dress if I possibly can. Um, right, this one, again, same seller for a pound. This is another Whistles one and it's got um, sort of an inside dress and the outside's crochet. So this one's more like a slip on the inside and then you've got the crochet outside. Um, and that again, a pound. So did the usual, was checking for, for pulls and tears. I think that one was all right. I think there's a small pull in the other one, but a pound, it's not the end of the world. But by keeping that mental note of roughly what I've spent as I'm going along, I can make sure that I don't overspend. I don't mind spending more on certain items if I know I'm gonna get more money back and it's, it's just balancing up your, your risk versus reward and, and keeping your eye on the prize and keeping a, a mental note of where, where you are financially to make sure that you are gonna make money. Uh, last two bread and butter dresses. Uh, I think this is another Hobbs. Hobbs? Yeah, another Hobbs. And again, that's quite a nice one. That was two pounds. And like I've said before, if you find someone who's got a decent, either a decent uh, eye for design and they've got nice clothes or they've just got a couple of decent brands, you know to keep digging. Um, and so after finding that one, I'll sling that over my arm. Uh, again, similar sort of prices, I would have thought I'll put it up for mid to high 30s and we'll, we'll take off this, but easy. Uh, I spent less on that so I can afford to take less but I, I average it out and um, but I, I would have thought easily 25 I should take without too many dramas but I'll put it up for higher and see where we go. Uh, this one is Reese. Again absolutely fantastic brand and that's quite nice so again I'll do similar for that 
but now people are starting to move out and about and um, go out in public again hoping it's gonna to give uh, my uh, clothing a little bit of a spike so that was at today's one that's my sort of bread and butter high-end high street type stuff that I look for I, I don't pick up supermarket brands I don't pick up uh, stuff like Zara River Island any of that sort of stuff nothing wrong with that and you can make good money doing that but you have to deal in volume I don't have time to deal in volume I, I deal low volumes high margins um, that's high enough for my bread and butter items. These other bits could have some uh, some really good margins. So I'll just grab those and we'll look at the, uh, the designer stuff. Right, just before going on to the designer clothing, um, little Harry Potter crochet sealed set. So make your own Harry Potter. Um, paid 50p, it will sell for about somewhere around the eight or nine quid. I'm gonna hold that for Christmas. Yes, it is less, um, profit than I would normally try and make per item but it is something that is small easy to post and sealed um, and will potentially go well at around Christmas so for 50p out there is essentially zero risk for something that should pay for for example two of these tops so um, yes I try and keep my margins high but I do make allowances so brand new sealed stuff that I think is going to have uh, a decent quick flip uh, and a, a reasonable sale price I do keep an eye out for so yeah that should be okay um, I won't go through all of them because I'm getting tight on time um, but I'll try and bang through them quickly so two pairs of jeans another high-end high street so this is Reese again paid uh, two pounds for those so Reese jeans for men they're, they're skinny ones should get somewhere around the 20 quid mark, that's fine. And these are a pair of nudie jeans. Again, quite slim cut, skinny cut, men's jeans. Uh, actually, nudie jeans go for a little bit more, so I would have thought maybe closer to the 30-ish pound mark, so quite happy with those. Uh, right, so onto these items. All of this, this, this whole part is from one seller. Um, I see her there regularly and I buy off her regularly and she has often got some very, very high-end designer gear um, and it's at quite reasonable prices. Definitely less than I'd pay in a charity shop. And because of that, and I know that she sells a lot of good stuff, I, I don't really haggle a lot with her. I'm pretty much happy with the price she's asking. Um, I'll, I'll see if there's a deal to be made if I'm buying something in bulk. Um, and I'll, I might haggle a little bit if there's a, f a floor in something, but otherwise I'm pretty happy to pay what she's got. But it also, because I know that she has so much high quality stuff, even if I don't recognize a brand, I will often buy it anyway, based on the, the design and the materials, and knowing that she pretty much only has designer gear. Um, and the stuff that isn't I recognize isn't. So it's worth me taking a chance on a few items. Um, so. I'll bang through it. So this one I did recognise. And that top is by Marnie. Marnie is very, very expensive. Um, paid five pounds for that. I can't remember what I said that would sell for. Let's have a look. I thought that should sell for Marnie top, somewhere between 40 and 50 pounds. So pretty damn good margin in that. Um, and it's a, a, a nice top, looks good. So happy with that. So five pounds into 40 to 50. Once I've basically sold two items, everything's paid for. Um, this one I didn't recognize. And this was by Lena Tomei, T-O-M-E-I. Uh, reasons I bought it, I know that her stuff's generally good. And it said it was made in Italy. So. Lightweight summer dress, decent size on it. Uh, and I had to look this one up as well. Not huge margins, 20, uh, 25 pounds. So not brilliant, but five and 25 quid, it's not the end of the world. Some of the stuff does go for more, but I don't think this is one of those designs. So we'll see, I'll probably price high, see where it goes. Um, but I'm not holding my breath that that's gonna be mega margins. Uh, next one was this one. I'll find the blooming top. 
Again, this is another one I didn't recognize. This is by Gerard Darrell. Now, whilst I didn't recognize it, I did have a look and it's 75% uh, silk, 25% cotton. So, and it was a very, very fine knit and there's some very fine detail in that knit. So it is essentially a basic sort of a vest top, but there's some very, very fine detail in there. That's a nice top. So uh, I had to look that one up and not huge margins, but somewhere between 20 and 30 pounds, depending on how long we want to hold on to that. Um, but now I know another brand to keep an eye out for. If I can get it at a sensible, sensible price, then it's definitely worth me buying. Uh, this one I did know, and this is by Sandro, Sandro Paris. Uh, I really like the colours on that, and it's quite, it's all, it's elasticated, so you can see it's all tucked in around the waist. Um, that, it does look like quite a small size, but um, again, five, I've pretty much paid five pounds for every item. Uh, and the Sandro tops, depending on the pattern and the size, somewhere between 35 and 50 plus. So um, yeah, for, for a fiver out, very happy with that. And again, unbreakable, very small, easy to pack and post, no dramas. Uh, so this one, it's tag to come loose, but this, first time I've ever picked it up, it's some Victoria Beckham. So it's a long sleeve top. I paid a little bit more for this one. I paid 10 for this. Um, never bought any Victoria Beckham before, but I thought it's, it's got to be worth a punt. Um, and prices on that vary wildly, depending on the style. Um, so I don't particularly know whether that is, is a, a fashionable or a sought after um, design of top. But it seems Victoria Beckham tops can vary wildly anywhere between sort of 50 and 100 quid. So, um, yeah, I've, I've got no idea on that. We'll have to um, have to wait and see. But, um, yeah, I thought that was uh, not too bad for, for a tenner. It's got to be worth a punt. And if it doesn't work out, the other items will cover the um, the fact that it's I've spent a tenner on one item. If it hasn't worked out brilliantly. Either way... My ten is safe. There's no way I'm going to lose on it. it just means I'm, I may not make masses and masses of money. Uh, two items left, and we are done. Uh, so we have got this one. And this is uh, Comme de Garçon, which is a collaboration brand between us, uh, a Japanese designer and a French designer. This one's got quite poofy sleeves on it. Um, it's not a technical term, I don't know what you call them. But Comme de Garçon stuff is usually, I don't know about over design, but it's quite out there. It's very avant garde um, and can be quite worth quite a lot. In this particular case, uh, somewhere between sort of 35 and 50 odd pounds. Um, I'll probably aim high 40s, see where it goes, um, but take a sensible offer. As I, as I do with most stuff, I'll take a sensible offer with most stuff. I generally price. 20% higher than I'm willing to take or thereabouts. Um, and that gives me uh, wiggle room to take an offer. But it means even with taking a, a 20, maybe even up to a 25% hit on what I'd initially put it at, I still should, after fees, make around 20 pound profit per item as a minimum. Obviously I wanna make more on certain items and that covers it for the ones that haven't worked out as quite as planned. Now this one, this is a very weird looking top. Uh, this is the most expensive one in theory, new. I'll find the blooming way around. How do I, which way around does it go? So this, I can't even get it the right way around. Right, that's the front. So it's an asymmetric top, and this is Stella McCartney. So it'll go on you like that. And it's weird because you've got like the collar of like a polo shirt and like the placard there with the buttons. So it goes around like that. And it's got these sort of fringe tassels on each side. And there is a pull on the back, which I need to have a look at because it looks like that pull has been repaired badly. But I think 
If I spend a little bit of time on it, I can do a better job. Um, I'll still have to declare it, but as long as it looks, the, the pattern looks even, it should be okay. Now, Stella McCartney stuff, it's expensive. Um, I, oh, and I forgot this one. <laughs> Didn't realize until I got back. Still got original tags and buttons in the little button pouch. So whilst it is brand new with tags, it is flawed. Hopefully I can fix that um, and I will have to declare that. Stella McCartney stuff. I got a Stella McCartney dress a little while ago, same lady. Paid 15 for that. New, it's over 900 pounds. So as I've mentioned before, there can be some absolutely astronomical margins to be made with clothes. I'm not saying I can sell it for 900 pounds, but if I'm able to sell it for over 150 and I've only paid 15 pounds out, that's not too bad. So that that's why I, I don't, I'm not a clothing seller, but I do have a, a decent proportion, more than a decent proportion of my buyers are usually clothes because you can make really good margins on those pieces. Um, if, as, as I've said before, if I was selling, um, if I was doing this full time, I would have to uh, buy lower, not low end, but lower end items as well, which would flip quicker and make a smaller profit, but would keep cash flow going. Um, but the way I'm doing it, because I've only got a certain amount of hours per week to put into this, I've got more stock than I can possibly deal with. So why would I buy stuff that's um, sort of lower than mediocre? I want to have stuff that that makes me decent profits because I can't even get around to selling my other good stuff that's got, I've got literally thousands of pounds worth of stuff, stock unlisted in boxes in, um, in that room. So whilst part of my brain says that I should stop buying and list, I know that I'm not going to be sourcing at all through winter, which means that I can just list this list and, and use everything in that room. So it's like the, the farmer's saying of um, making hay while the sun shines. The sun is shining, the gear is out there. Even though I'm spending more on stock than I'm earning at the moment, it doesn't matter. I'm this, because I'm part-time, My this has zero impact onto my living costs because my living costs are uh, paid with at my day job. So it means that I can take risks now, I can invest in the business, and I'll reap those rewards later. I'm not making a loss each month, so it depends on how much I'm spending, but certainly I'm taking, when I started doing this two years ago, I was probably spending 40, 60 quid out of a car boot sale, and I might be lucky if I took 80 pound with me. I took 300 and, 60 pounds with me today because I don't want to get caught short. If I find like uh, a seller or sellers who have got the best gear, I want to take advantage of that. So that does involve a decent um, investment. So I've got to be ready to do that. Um, but it does mean once the season's over, I'm shutting that shop and it will be list, 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 list. Um, so I might have nine grand's worth of stuff listed at the moment. By the end of the year, I'm hoping I might be able to get that up to somewhere like 15 grand's worth of, of stuff listed, um, which we'll see. So, um, but at the minute, whilst I can get, get the good stuff in, I'm gonna get it in. I'll list what I can that I think will, certain items that I think will sell quickly to get me cash back in, other items which I know are gonna make mega margins, and then other bits I'll leave till later. There's no point in me listing the um, little Harry Potter set until closer to Christmas because it's only gonna make a couple of quid. So let's get um, the ones that will make more money on first. And it doesn't mean that I'm gonna have a death pile of low value items. It's just, I will get through them, if, if, I will be methodical, but for the moment, while I get the good stuff, I'm gonna keep buying it. Uh, so that's it for the minute. Um, so lessons of the day are, do some research, so like the um, paperweights, uh, I invested 30 quid into them because I spent a bit of time learning about paperweights, so it made sense to, to put that investment in. They're not brilliant, but again, I've learned more. Uh, when you're buying stuff that could have missing parts, such as this thing, it's just been an absolute waste of time. 
So when you're buying stuff that could have missing parts, check whether it's got the missing parts. I didn't know until I got home. It's my own silly fault. I was a bit too much of an eager beaver in the morning. Um, other than that, learn your brand so that you can take um, as many opportunities as that you go past because there's no point getting up at five in the morning, getting to a car boot sale and not knowing what a good brand is because if you walk past it, why have you even bothered getting up? Spend some time, learn your brands, learn your niches, um, and then you can take advantage of the opportunities that are out there. Spread your risk, buy different items, don't just niche into one thing, and it means that you've also spread your, so you can spread your opportunities and spread your risks. And hopefully, it means that you'll get a more consistent income and hopefully a higher income. So that's it for the moment. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. You've been watching me, my name is Lee, and you've been watching me on Cola Flipper. If you, are, if you wouldn't mind if you're still watching it here, please click on the, the like button, that really, really helps me. If you haven't subscribed, please do, and I will try and keep on giving you decent content and teach you about random stuff that you may not know. You may know, you may not, but if you're not watching regularly, you're not going. So, um, right, thanks very much, and I shall see you next time.